Hi, I'm Jen Wong, CEO of Reddit, and I'm excited to talk about driving action and advocacy through online community. Uh, I'm going to start with a short video. I love that. Hopefully that shows you um, how vast Reddit is. It is the world's largest and most vibrant platform of communities covering every interest on the planet. Um, we've been around for 15 years and we continue to organically expand in breadth and depth and users. And we cover everything from makeup to gaming to personal finance. And our mission is to provide community and belonging to everyone in the world. And at Reddit, you know, we connect people through their passions and interests, not through their identity or their individual social graphs. Um, our growth has been really consistent. And, you know, from pets to parenting, from skincare to stonks, there's truly a community on Reddit for everyone. And I think, you know, if you think about the events of the last few weeks, I think they really demonstrated uh, truly what we've known for a long time, which is that communities have power to drive real world action. Communities are empowering because they allow people open access to information. They allow them the ability to find others who share their interests and the ability to collectively move products they love, change minds, change values, profound beliefs like veganism or their religion inspire action at a personal scale, community scale, and even a global scale. And, you know, if you think about the long arc of the internet, um, which Reddit has been a part of because we've been around for 15 years, um, a lot of it has been around empowering individuals and democratizing access. You know, we always say at Reddit that everything interesting on Reddit was made and fueled by our users and our communities. If you think about the arc, it started with access to information, right? In, instead of only reading professional publishers, you could write your own thoughts through forums and blogs and talk to other people who didn't live near you. And that was access to a new set of conversations and knowledge. If you think about the next arc, there's one around e-commerce, right? You could have access to buy things, goods and services that are not near you. Um, you could transcend borders. And at the same time, if you're a shop owner, you could find customers not near you. And that allowed you know, this growth that we're seeing in direct to consumer and new businesses. And then there's this next arc around connection, which involves social media, but also has evolved into the idea of real-time presence. And we see this with Reddit Live, with real synchronous live streaming, even between people who don't know each other, sharing their music, sharing their art, or just sharing an AMA with somebody in the Ukraine and learning about their life. And all of that has culminated in um, people-powered action. Uh, what we've seen on Reddit, certainly over the last 15 years and even more now, are things like people teaching each other about how to deal with PPP and COVID-related unemployment benefits, which are changing in Byzantine, you know, sending, um, you know, beauty care products to healthcare workers who are suffering from mask injuries, and people inspiring each other to march for science and the health of the planet. Uh, we've also seen people educating each other on our financial system and how to participate in it. And you know what we've seen recently, especially over the last couple of months, is not new to us. I mean, those who have been on Reddit for a while know that we see this kind of activity play out all the time at varying scales. It's just that it's even growing in its scale. 
And I think, you know, when I think about the last year and the impact of the pandemic, we saw a surge in traffic on Reddit. And, you know, I think what happened is when you think about what's important to people's lives, that sense of community and belonging and connection in a time of unprecedented physical disconnection, you know, that we've seen in the last year has made communities even more valuable and important. And we've certainly seen this play out um, on Reddit over the last year. Um, you know, specifically when the coronavirus first arrived, you know, you have this novel virus and people flock to Reddit for just base information. What is this? You know, how do I protect myself? How, you know, should I be scared of it? What do I do? And so traffic to communities like r slash coronavirus, ask science, were at an all time high. In fact, all of those communities collectively are over two and a half million subscribers now. Um, and what was interesting is that, you know, for a period of time it was very serious. There was no humor. But then there was this shift, this shift from fear and panic to more of a settling into this new normal at home. You know, people were connecting with communities to help with their new life at home. Everything from help with their sourdough baking efforts, and I'm one of those, I'm still failing to make a successful sourdough, I have a lot of envy, to planting a vegetable garden. I did that too with the help of uh, lots of Reddit uh, Redditors making masks, um, doing home haircuts, also learned how to do that, um, advice for how to homeschool. I mean, you name it, whatever people were grappling with in their real life, they were connecting about it on Reddit. And they stayed to find even more communities. And that's what we're seeing is just more and more engagement as, they've, as people have come and discovered these communities. You know, a lot of new behaviors emerged over the last year, and I think accelerated. And I, I think online purchasing and commerce is one of them. And that path to purchase has really evolved, and online communities are playing a bigger role in that. You know, um, if you think about e-commerce, one of the things that's really challenging is you're you're looking for real people with real experience with that product because you've never touched and feel, you know, felt and used some of these products. And what's interesting is that communities are really, really trusted. In fact, they're as trusted as consumer reviews because it's real people with real experience. Um, and what's happened is that people are coming to communities like Reddit to help research and figure out what are you know, their options and when they go into their consideration period before buying, they are relying on that information. They're even able to ask questions about products and features. And so what's happening is that people who visit communities like Reddit, you know, in their purchase path, they have a lot more conviction in their decision. They're deciding faster, they're spending more, they're more loyal, and there's just a really important high quality new customer. So this evolution, you know, in e-commerce has uh, it, it is it has accelerated and communities are playing a bigger role in that. I think a really good example of this is actually Tushy. I don't know if you know this company, but it's a direct consumer brand. It's a bidet company, and you know what happened in March and April in the pandemic is that there was no toilet paper and a lot of discussion about no toilet paper. And Tushy stepped in and said, "Okay, this is you know this is a moment for us to get into that conversation." They leveraged humor, which works really well on Reddit. They did something that um, you know not a lot of advertisers do, but they turned comments on. And instead of just advertising their product, they actually had a conversation. Um, they asked people about, you know, hey, what should we name our products? They talked about their brand and you know what their mission was. And what's interesting is that instead of just being performance oriented, they, they focused on engagement and the right creative. And in the end, they had a major breakthrough in terms of their performance. You know, beyond their drive, they were driving sales and the return on ad spend was so strong because they saw that the value of the view on community drove results for them. And, you know, I think, that again just echoes what I mentioned before about this change in the path to purchase and how important communities are at that moment of consideration. So I'll kind of wrap here and just say, you know, thanks for letting me share what's been happening on Reddit for 15 years. 
and now is really accelerating at increasing scale uh, across all areas, you know, from gaming to culture to financial markets. I think, you know, if there's one takeaway, I would say I, I think we should expect that online communities will be increasingly important to individuals and that they are going to be spurring more action. Um, and this brings a huge opportunity for individuals, for companies and advertisers alike. Um, we call Reddit the most human place on the internet. And I think hopefully today you've gotten a sense of how vast it is. And it's the place where passionate communities drive real world action. So to, uh, I'm going to invite Jer Carrie Flynn, who is a media reporter at CNN, uh, who's going to be joining me for some additional discussion. Thank you. Jen, thank you for Hi, that Carrie. great presentation. <laughs> it's great, great to chat. Uh, and you know, what still amazes me is this conversation, that presentation has been a year in the making. And obviously so much has happened in the world and so much has happened on Reddit. But like you said, Reddit is 15 years old. So I'd love to hear from you. What are the major ways you see Reddit has changed, but also what ways has it stayed the same? Yeah, thanks for, for asking, you know. Um, you know, thank goodness what's changed is our product and UX has evolved. We are now really a, sort of a mobile first company. We cover all platforms, but remember we started on, you know, the desktop. Um, our communities have grown and expanded substantially. Just the, top, the topography and the topics that they cover. I mean, it really is so vast from like, pets to personal finance, and we've grown globally. Um, and our audience has grown and diversified. You know, it's it's more gender balanced than I think people think. And while it skews young, it really serves all ages and all life stages. You know, everything from an emerging adult to a new parent to somebody dealing with retirement, the whole thing. Um, and I think what else has changed is that you know, we have an advertising business, which we built, which is the fuel for our mission. And um, I think we've proven our value to, to brands of all shapes and sizes. And I think that's really exciting. What stayed the same with Reddit is the platform and company values. We are a very, very mission-driven business. And everything we do starts with community and those values. Everything from respect for user privacy, community first, you know, um, you know, moderation, our approach to moderation and governance. Um, communities and users are at the heart of everything we do. We release product very differently than other companies. It's a process of discussion with our communities and adoption and users. And, um, and I'll say, you know, the only thing I'll say that has not changed also is that we, as a company, um, really, you know, our governance model and our philosophy around how to have civil discourse and, you know, be safe is, has, has been the same over the last 15 years. And while we've evolved our thinking there, um, you know, that system is really unique to Reddit and is still at the core of how we govern. So as you, I think, alluded to multiple times in the presentation, Wall Street Bets really took the world by, you know, but dominated conversation. And I would say kind of surprised, you know, a lot of people, myself included, the market, clearly the government. I'm curious though, you said that that type of action isn't really anything new to Reddit. So why do you think people were caught by surprise? And and could you share like another example about the fact that it that kind of behavior isn't really new? Yeah, it's it's really not new for those who have been on Reddit for, for a long time. It's not new. That happens pretty regularly, maybe not at that scale, right? I mean, they were talking, um, national global scale financial markets but you do see that happen let's say within communities you see product fly off the shelf because people are like this is a you know this is an incredible change for our community or you see like i mentioned the march for science like a movement form um, where there's a consciousness and a belief system that's emerging you're like okay we need to take action um so it's not a new phenomenon we do see it quite often and you and you know you see things like 
incredible humanity. Like we, you know, that Reddit has raised, um, you know, raised funds for charity just because somebody inspired a group of individuals to do so. On r slash DIY, we saw Reddit users donate books to a man who was building a custom bookshelf for his late wife. Um, and it was to help him, you know, with, with his grief over her passing and they helped fill the bookshelf. I mean, Redditors are spurred to action in these unbelievable ways that sometimes are for an individual, sometimes for a community and sometimes at a global scale. Um, it's, it's something that we see all the time on Reddit. And I, I know that might be surprising, but that is, you know, wh why I keep saying passionate communities drive action. So one other thing that is so core to Reddit that I know very well about is about anonymity on the platform. You mentioned at the beginning, it's all about interest. It's not about your social graph. I'm curious about what you and, and your team see as the pros to anonymity, but also the cons to having that be so core to what Reddit is. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I don't, I don't really see any cons, although I think this is probably um, hotly debated by peers. Um, you know, it, it's not that we're, um, it's not that we're the advocates of pure anonymity. The principle is data privacy, really, right? We empower users to be the master of their identity and their data. And, you know, I think the option for privacy is core, certainly to our DNA and our culture and our values. And we just believe that no one should have to surrender their privacy to find community and belonging online. And on Reddit, you don't have to. I mean, it's your choice. You could choose to reveal your identity. You could choose to reveal parts of your identity. And by the way, people do, because we have a lot of, for example, identity-based communities, right? We have people who are LGBTQ questioning. You're revealing an aspect of your identity. Um, you're not revealing your PII. And in that case, a lot of people have good reason not to. They couldn't access community and belonging if they did. So. Um, so I think that, you know, we view it as a really important driver for our mission of bringing community and belonging. Uh, we think it fuels trust, it fuels authenticity, and it encourages people to be their authentic true self, which is what is expected um, on Reddit. And what we see is greater honesty and net net more positive and inspirational exchanges um, and a lot of the research has proven this out. I think there was an article on like Global Web Index or something on this. Um, and, you know, I, I know that there's there are plenty of people who would say, no, having identity makes you more responsible and for what you say. And I would just look at, say, look at social media. And is that really true? And uh, I'm, I'm not sure that it is. That's a good point. I know uh, Reddit obviously has been in the news a lot lately for like when we talked about Wall Street bets. But not too long ago, Reddit used to be in the news a lot for hate speech and misinformation. And so I'm curious about the ways that Reddit has been keeping its community safe and, and healthy, especially in recent years. Yeah. I mean, look, our mission is to help everyone in the world find community and belonging. And this means finding communities that reflect our values and respect civil discourse and human dignity at its core, right? So hate, harassment, and calls for violence, they're, they're just, they're simply not allowed on Reddit. And I think that stance was, you know, even further clarified as part of our 2020 content policy update, um, you know, that we worked on last year, released last year. Um, like safety is built into our platform structure. It's one of the things that uh, makes Reddit really unique. And the way it works is we have a multi-layered approach. We obviously have tools, systems, and policies at the base, um, which Reddit Inc. supports. We have a very unique layer of governance, which is around communities and moderators in the middle and users, where they really share the burden of safety they participate in. It. And what that allows for is nuance so communities can write their own rules and moderators help enforce those rules because they have a lot of context for the conversation and users can help upvote and downvote content to sift through what is you know what should be seen and what should not be seen 
obviously, because we're in the advertising business, we have additional layer of safety for our advertising partners, and they get a lot of um, choice and control in that. We obviously have a hand curated allow list for where they run their advertising. They have choices about you know how they target or target away. So they also get uh, controls on top of it. So our our view on this is. You know, our our um, our approach to moderation can scale with users. That that's really important to us. And I think over the last couple of years, what you've seen is there are it, it's challenging. Um, you know, certainly for many of our peers to keep up with their scale. But I think one of the things we've done well uh, is scale our moderation with how much we've grown. Yeah, it's great to hear it. And it's it, curious, I know you mentioned in the presentation about the ways that advertisers and brands can participate on Reddit. And you, when you mentioned Trishy, which I'm very interested in that brand, that they had their comments turned on, but you said, you know, that's something that's, that's rare. I, I'm curious, I would love to hear a little bit more about the ways that brands really engage with Reddit, like in terms of being so conversational, is that really core to the way that most yeah. brands really participate? And do you see that being more so going forward? Some do um, and, and some don't, but I think the ones that are successful absolutely listen to the community. So they're very aware, they kind of like read the virtual room or read the virtual community really well. And then their creative is very, very attuned to uh, the communities that they're talking to. That is, that is ultimately, I think, what makes you really successful on Reddit as a brand. And, and we help with that. There's lots of in access to insights to do that. Um, what Tushy did is they, they did turn their comments on. Not every advertiser does. They did. And they engaged in conversation. And that allowed them to show, I think, more personality in their brand and for people to get to know them. And um, they actually were able to ask questions, right? So they asked, like, what should we name this? What do you think about this feature? And they got feedback. And, you know, Reddit users, they enjoy, they like being asked what they think. Like, they're smart. Like, you treat people as smart people. Like, they will help you and they will share with you. And not all brands, I think, are able to do that. I think some of the DTC brands, it's a little easier for them because they have a streamlined organization that allows them to be nimble and do that. But our job, you know, as uh, you know, in terms of Reddit advertising is to help all of our partners be able to access the amazingness of that experience. So it's certainly part of our aspiration and we do recommend it for everybody. Um, but I'd say Tushy was probably more uh, advanced in their thinking and ability to use Reddit. Great. Well, last thing for you, I know Reddit has had quite the start of the year. Obviously, there was Wall Street bets and all the attention around that. But you also closed on a massive funding round. You ran a pretty cool Super Bowl ad. And, you know, not too long ago, you acquired a company called Dub Smash. So walk me through what's up with Reddit in the year ahead with so much going on. What can you tell me? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I can't. The last three months have been just wild and amazing. Uh, you can really, really feel the momentum, and uh, we have no plans to slow slow down. So, uh, I am I'm really, really excited about uh, this year. Um, I mean, look, we we're committed to continuing to build out our user base right here, the U.S. and and globally. Um, you know, first, I think, you know, we are doubling down on our investment in video. You saw that with the acquisition of Dub Smash. I think Reddit, we want Reddit to be a platform that is both read and watched. And we've seen organic growth of video on Reddit. And we think that that can even be a bigger part of the experience. Um, you know, we are going to continue to, ex to expand globally. Uh, Reddit is still not in local language. Um, it's mainly in English. So if you can imagine that at our scale, that still is in process. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, we're continuing to build our ads business and revenue, which is fuel for our mission, and continuing to invest in what we call direct-to-consumer features, like our virtual economy, where there are gaming-like features that I think make Reddit just more fun. 
Um, so I think, you know, we, we have no, even though we've been around for 15 years, we have no fear of continuing to evolve the platform. And I think Reddit will look really different at the end of 2021, but even better. Great. Well, I'm very much looking forward to an even more fun Reddit. Uh, Jen, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Thanks, Carrie.